Hey, Matt. Jeremy, how are you, sir? I'm good. When I saw your memo, I was I was wondering who'd be driving tonight. I'm glad to see it's you. <laughs> uh, just a little help for the committee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I almost made it up to your place yesterday. I went for a uh, 80k ride. Wow. Yeah. It was a perfect day. It was it was a little warm. <laughs> yeah, it was a good one. Sun got hot fast. I was out uh, su uh, Saturday. Amy and I rode to Yarmouth, even though oh, nice. And that yeah. was a that was a good ride over there for breakfast and back and uh, but yeah yesterday we were out early went for a 10k run and it was just uh, yeah on the way hot. back you got hot. <laughs> well, it got hot and Saturday night we went down to Crescent Beach and went for it was like perfect swimming weather. Wow. And by the time we got down to Crescent last night, you know, it was like 68. You know, yeah. And I was like, you know, we could go in, but. <laughs> Well, it's a good recovery. <laughs> That's not a problem today. Actually, it looks like it's trying to dry out a little bit after last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just went out for a walk in the woods and things are soaking, soaking yeah. in. Yeah, definitely. Evening, Caitlin. Hey. Okay. Let's see here. Is that ice or veggies behind you, Caitlin? Oh, that's <laughs> There's, there's baggies in your background. Yeah, it's bad flour and oats. This is a picture from the market. Yeah. It looked for a second like you were icing your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I should. <laughs> I did have uh, uh, that uh, just those... Uh, uh, points for consideration added to uh, materials for the meeting too on the uh, on the town website as well. Oh, People need to, uh, to thanks, Matt. That. That's great. Thank you. I just thought it might be helpful for uh, for discussion. Perfect. Uh, Heather got, Heather got my invitation. <laughs> I did. Hi there. I'm just going to try to um, connect to my AirPods. How's everybody doing on this rainy day? Good. Hey, Donna. Happy to see this on a Monday and not a Saturday. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we had a really great weekend. It was awesome. Evening, Donna. Good. Yeah, it was a great weekend. Yeah, we celebrated my, uh, we, what do you call it? Uh, we socially distancedly, distancedly celebrated my mother's 81st birthday on Saturday. So, oh, nice. yeah. that's wonderful. We were all responsible, yeah. but it was good. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. That was nice. Let's see. Okay. Want to see how many attendees we have. And um, I think we're about ready to get started. What do you think, Matt? Whenever you are ready, Chairman, ready to go. <laughs> okay. Um, and you're recording this? Yes, we are recording and uh, we'll, ha we'll have it available uh, for anybody who'd like to watch it uh, as of probably tomorrow morning. Uh, I can't commit to that. It may be mid morning, but as soon as I get it, I usually get it to Wendy. So, okay. Okay, great. So um, welcome everybody. I am uh, Valerie Devereaux. I am a town councilor and the chair of the appointments committee. I want to um, welcome you all here and I'd really like to acknowledge um, at the beginning of this meeting, I'd like to acknowledge our African American, black, colored and indigenous people who live and work in Cape Elizabeth. And I'd also like to um, say that um, I apologize that 
it's taken us so long for the town council to put together a diversity committee. So on um, behalf of the council, um, my apologies for that, but it doesn't mean that it's not important or not important to us. So um, I'm really excited about establishing this committee and hearing the conversation. I um, wanted to first start out by introducing the members of the committee. We have um, Caitlin Jordan is a town councilor. She's a member of our appointment committee. Jeremy Gabrielson is a town councilor. He's a member of our um, committee. And we're all three town councilors who are on this subcommittee called the Appointments Committee. Uh, Matt Sturgis is our town manager. And so he does a lot of the moderating of the meetings. I've also invited Donna Wolfram, who's our school superintendent, to join the meeting, and Heather Altenberg, who is the chair of the um, school board, Cape Elizabeth School Board, to join the meeting. I think their voices are really important in this discussion on how we move forward with a committee. I also um, was uh, um, approached by a couple people who said they didn't really understand how the committees were formed. So I just wanted to talk about that just for a moment and let you know that we are going to be looking at creating a new committee that will either be I'm guessing a standing committee, which means it would be a permanent committee that reports to the town council. And, um, or it could be an ad hoc committee, which would be a committee that's just tasked with um, a certain duty, but it wouldn't be permanent. So those are the two types of committees we could look at. We're also looking at, look at my notes here, the um, naming the committee we do not have a name for it yet, and um, we have not set any names. We have not created any structure yet for this committee. That's what we're talking about tonight. So um, we're gonna look at the number of people on the committee, what, um, if anyone's going to be assigned to that committee or not, um, and then the charge. Um, what, what are the, the duties, the purpose, the powers of um, the committee? What, what do we want the committee to do? And so um, what, I, what we typically do is we open up the meeting to questions from our participants, our um, attendees. So right now we have um, six attendees in um, our audience. So I wanna welcome you all. And uh, I'd really like to, if any of you have anything to say, I'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'd also love to hear um, any ideas you have for maybe a name of the committee, uh, what you'd like to see the committee do. I know we had, um, we had one person who wrote in and said they'd really like it to, to be a broad um, charge something like um, how to make Cape Elizabeth a more inclusive and vibrant community. So think about that. Is there a charge um, that you would like to see or duties that you would like to see this committee take on? Um, maybe it's um, identifying diversity and inclusion issues and opportunities in the town. So if any of you would like to address that, I would love to hear that. And then um, I'd really love to hear from um, Donna and Heather if they'd like to speak about what the school's looking at doing and whether we want to um, create a joint committee or two separate committees and um, kind of where we go from here, because I think it's important that, um, that we work together on this. So Matt, would you, would, if anyone would like to speak from our attendees, could you please raise your hand? Okay, Matt. We have uh, Valerie uh, Levanos, and I think, there you are Valerie, uh, your microphone should be live now. Hi Matt, thank you, can you hear me? Yes, perfect, thank you. Yep, I just wanna make sure that, um, I'm not really sure how we, uh, operate with task force in the town 
but I just want to make sure that it's something that people can apply to and that we're including a diverse um, viewpoint during this process. I'm, I was a little concerned because I saw posted somewhere that the um, people making up the task force would be like the police chief and um, school members and things. And I just want to make sure that we're actually representing a diverse viewpoint. Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, I'll speak to when we're finished with uh, everyone speaking, I'll speak to that. Madam Chair, next will be Paul, uh, Paul S. I believe that's Paul Seidman. Uh, Paul, I think I'll have you here. Hi, can you hear me? You are live. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks for doing this, Valerie, and uh, glad to see all of you. I, a few thoughts initially. One is that there would be two committees that, that uh, the one that we're talking about tonight be a standalone and that could work with any other committees. Um, I'd like anti-racism to be in the title, not things like bias. And I, um, I, I think my main recommendation is that any, any part of the process be done with um, accountability to people of color built in. So um, making sure that those folks who are most harmed by the racism here um, are that there's a relationship built in, that there's a structure built in for getting feedback. I just saw uh, Robin D'Angelo, uh, who wrote White Fragility, do a, uh, a webinar. And one of the things that really spoke to me was that white people are so race illiterate <laughs> that we not only especially those of us who grow up in white, you know, white communities, we're not only, um, you know, not well informed about communities of color, but we're also not very informed about what it means to be white. And I think for that reason, especially, it's great to have uh, people of color that we are, you know, um, have relationship to and, and that can offer us uh, information about the things that we're doing that might be specifically only from a white perspective. Mm -hmm. That's it for now. Thanks. Thank you so much, Paul. Next, we have Thomas Esch. Uh, Mr. Esch, it's going to take me a moment here and you should be live. Yeah, okay, your microphone should be hot now. Thank you. You're good. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you all for, for taking the time to do this this evening. Uh, that was a very interesting comment from the previous speaker. I was going to say uh, much of the same thing. I think we have to look at what's actually uh, bringing people into the streets in Cape Elizabeth. And right now, uh, the problem that's hitting us all in the face is racism. So while I can see a committee being, or working group being formed to continually address issues of inclusion and diversity, I think right now we do have to have a focus on uh, race relations and how CAPE is going to respond to the world around us. Because I think we have an opportunity to set an example for our entire area. And we can do this. And this is something that can really make CAPE proud and make us a leader. And we have the ability that some other places don't. So I would like to see, as uh, the previous speaker said, accountability to and inclusion of people of color on this working group. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, looks like we have um, Melanie, yes, we have, uh, Melanie Thomas. Yep, and uh, Melanie, you should be unmuted. There you are. Good evening. Hi, good afternoon. Oh, I almost said good afternoon. Good evening, <laughs> all. <laughs> um, I too just want to say that um, just like the others have spoken that I, I think it's important that um, we set an example here in Cape um, and as a person of color and kids in the school system and um, one who um, struggles here, um, I think just like many people of color, um, 
you know, we have issues that need to be addressed mm -hmm. and concerns um, mm -hmm. about those struggles. So mm -hmm. for me, I think I just wanted to say, you know, that it really includes new faces, new people, um, and is directed to where we're going um, mm -hmm. as a community here in Cape. Um, also, you know, addressing things of need mm -hmm. here and that things mm -hmm. do need to change as far as affordable housing, the lack of diversity here, um, and addressing those issues, mm -hmm. just being, feeling equal and included um, and able to speak up. And um, sometimes that takes where mm -hmm. we're all included um, and it would be good to see a lot of change here with that. So I just wanted to say that um, and to learn more about you know, how you're choosing people, how the process works, um, and m moving towards some type of change here that is good for Cape, and it will lead as an example to other uh, communities mm -hmm. that look to us uh, with all the privileges that we have, that we could set a standard that they would lead and follow us as well. So that is all I wanted to say. And I appreciate you guys listening and all the work that you have cut out for you. I do appreciate it. Thanks in advance. Thank you, Melanie. Okay, we have um, 11 attendees now. Is there anyone else that would um, like to make a comment or give us some input on the direction they'd like to see this committee take or a name for the committee? And you'll get an opportunity to speak again um, when we, uh, towards the end of the meeting. Okay. We have Nicole. Yeah, you should be live now, Nicole. Sorry for the delay. That's okay. Hi, everyone. Nicole Boucher, 14 Grover Road. Um, hope you're having a great evening. So one of the things that I really want to look toward for this committee is like what their goals are. And so some of the things that were coming to mind were just reviewing town policies for anything that might stack the cards in the favor of someone who maybe has more means. Um, you know, just in general, what our housing market is and what's available to make that market diverse, um, sidewalks, bus transportation, like the goals I'd like to see from the committee are kind of just looking at policy, recommending where they identify there potentially being some um, favoritism, not in the sense of like overt favoritism, but just, you know, propping the system up a little bit and then um, looking for best practices in other places of Maine or the country in general and seeing how they can bring them here. I know that we have a lot of great things going on in Cape, you know, this to fund the police talk that's been going on. You know, in Cape, we actually do have that, that percentage that other places want to strive for where a lot of our funding is in the school department, but like, where else is our money going and where could it be going? I'd love to have them some sort of um, community component where you know, as someone who's on the recycling committee, we get involved with the strawberry festival to make sure that we're educating the community. So what can this committee do for like fun day or even strawberry festival or what other events are going on? How can they bring in some sort of component to that that makes sure that other cultures in our town are represented at these town events? So those are just some of the things I'm thinking through like goals for the committee. Thank you, that's great. Would anyone else like to speak on any of these points or anything that you'd like to bring before our committee? We have e Eliza Matheson, Madam Chair. Okay, Eliza. There we go, and you're live now. Am I live now? Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Okay, awesome. Um, I have 
two children who are also like sitting in their beds talking a lot to me. So I apologize for any background noise. Um, I will keep this short and sweet just because um, I do believe everybody, one second please, everybody kind of said what I um, have been thinking about. But part of my hope and feeling around this committee is that there will be um, uh, really an, a, a big sense of inclusion in terms of accessibility, making sure that the people who need to be at the table talking can be at the table talking. Um, I actually think that Zoom has been a relatively good equalizer in that, and I found myself being able to tune in when I otherwise wouldn't have been able to. You know, I'm sitting here with my kid who's flailing on the floor, but it's bedtime and he needs to get in bed. But <laughs> and I wouldn't have been able to go to a meeting. So I really, um, I think this is a, a a good starting point to also talk about how. Um, the accessibility component of all of these, where these decisions are being made um, about people in our town. Um, that, that we need to have them at the table. So um, I appreciate it. I'm gonna stay tuned in on mute and um, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Okay. We have Nasser. Nasser, you should be live now, sir. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm just about sneaky from my party downstairs, and I'm gonna, I missed what you guys started so far. But I'm here just letting you know that I'll be eager to um, provide you any input that I have and, and look forward to this meeting. And I had a small chat with Valerie, and uh, it's a great start that all of you are here, and the communication and the energy is here. And uh, I just want to welcome for, for some input from all of you, and hopefully we can come up with some uh, some uh, actual points to work on you know, rather than just resolutions, words. And um, I think Nicole mentioned housing is number one priority uh, if we're actually going to get something, um, because I myself single-handedly working with one family trying to make them stay in Cape Elizabeth. And some of you may know that person, some of you know, but I have contact with you guys as well. And the mark is just great for, for our schools, basically, because nothing lasts than a week. And a four bedroom uh, is not, there's nothing under $500,000. And so to live in South Portland to get us permission over here is just, you may get permission one year, second year, but not necessarily every year. So we need to look at cross town rules and regulations and uh, uh, policies. If that can be, I know it's pretty relatively easy, but if it could be made it even easier um, and see if we can sh share housing resources as well. Um, if it's something could be developed or built just over the town, if, if it's cheaper, then by all means, let's do that. If a house has to be a certain buffer off the town boundary within 50 feet or 100 feet, they automatically could be cross, uh, can be shared to either school on either way, uh, on either side. Uh, so we got to think outside the box. We got to think of ideas. I think I had a phone call. I might have been muted for a little while. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of thoughts and a lot of goals we can do, but it, the first step, as you guys are already doing, is establishing a committee. And within this committee, there could be different sectors, and, and schools is one of them, and uh, we could work on those as well. But I'm very interested in, in uh, acquiring land and making socially economically available to certain people uh, who are not able to uh, purchase places here. So there's a prime land right now next to the town, one acre lot that could be possibly 5,000 square feet building, first floor uh, commercial, next two floors could be uh, uh, apartments. And so how can we actually, if you really want to roll our sleeves, how can we actually make that affordable? And can we work with a developer? Could we work with a investor? Could we work with an, uh, uh, a resident? Could we work with a landlord? Uh, what are some ways we can actually build 
next 10 apartments in there. I don't know if I talked to somebody over here or somebody else, but farmers is attracting young, young buyers in their communities, or, or college graduates who's starting a life, uh, millennials who's starting a life, uh, and they're not able to afford three or four hundred thousand dollar houses, but they, we should be welcoming them. We should bring in that kind of diversity as well, some youth to the town. So again, uh, ideas are endless. So let's roll our sleeves and get the conversation going. And thank you very much for launching this. Thank you, Nasser. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? We now have um, uh, 15 attendees. All right, if, sure, Jeremy. Um, I was just gonna, would like to suggest Valerie that we maybe if we dive into some of the discussion that we might open up another public comment period, you know, before we, before the very end of the meeting, just to give folks a chance to weigh in on what we've discussed. I think that's a great idea. I, I think we definitely need to do that. So, um, to, so I just want to um, explain just a little bit to some of the people that asked about the committee structure. We are actually the appointment committee and we, um, are tasked with appointing people to committees. Because there wasn't a committee that sets up new committees, the town council asked us, our appointment committee, to look at setting up this new committee. There, like I said, there is no name for it. We have not decided who the participants on this committee will be, but it's something that um, we're all gonna talk about tonight. There are there are some guidelines and some structure to it. And the committees are set up as, um, uh, they report to the town council. So the town council has these standing committees that report to the town council. And the way you get on a committee is you apply to, to be on the committee. So every year, is it, it's typically in November, Matt, when we put out the um, advertisement. Yeah, generally, uh, I think it's uh, October when the advertisement will go out, and then uh, then then they'll pretty much have the whole month, uh, maybe the first week or uh, into November, and then uh, Deborah will assemble, uh, Deborah Lane will assemble all the uh, potential candidates uh, for our committees, and then provide them based on their desired uh, committee appointment to the appointments committee. Then they can go through that and uh, interview uh, new uh, new appointees, and then make the appointments process. Generally, uh, the appointments come in, I think, in the December meeting, uh, first December meeting that the appointments are made at that point in time. Uh, also, with this process, this would be a bit uh, outside of the normal calendar uh, where the council would, you know, presumably the appointments committee would craft uh, the language, giving the structure to the committee, come back to the council. The council would then uh, weigh in on how it felt that the committee, you know, if they accepted it as that, or they might want to tweak it here or there. And then, then they would create it as a, a as a committee, and then they would go back out and open and openly advertise for members of the public who would like to apply for uh, membership on that committee. And then uh, it would be outside of the normal appointments process. We'd receive applications, bring them back to the appointments committee, and then you could make your appointment recommendations. And then once more, come back to the council, and then have the formal appointment made by the council. Should uh, but. That's, that's a long-winded explanation of a very uh, possibly long process. Right, Jeremy? So, so just to walk that out um, in an optimistic, most optimistic time frame, um, what, that, what that in theory would look like is this committee is gonna be making recommendations to the council that they could, in theory, the whole council could vote on at our July meeting. And then subsequent to that, we could open up nominations um, for the committee, potentially make recommendations at the August meeting, but more likely at the September meeting. And then the first meeting of this uh, committee would probably take place sometime in late September or early October. I, I think that sounds like a good uh, assessment of the calendar, Councilor Gaberson, yep. Thanks. 
So um, basically, if you're a resident of Cape Elizabeth, you can um, contact uh, Deborah Lane when we give the, um, you'll see the advertisement. It's usually in the Cape Courier and it's also on the website. Do you, I don't think there's any mass emails that are sent out, correct? Not at sure. the present time. Uh, we're in the process of uh, changing our website uh, where people, if they want to subscribe, uh, will be able to have those notifications sent to them. But at the present, we don't have that. But people can, can download the application off from the town's uh, website currently. Right. Jeremy? And, and just to add on to that, too, in addition to that, people can get the word out in other ways. So one of the things that I appreciate from folks who are on the call tonight is ideas for other ways that we can reach out to make sure we're, you know, getting the message out to folks who maybe don't haunt the town website as regularly as I do. Yeah. Okay, and so um, that's the committee. We're going, that's how you would apply to be on the committee. Then you would go through the interview process with the appointments committee. And um, as uh, Jeremy said, it goes back before the town council there you're approved and then the committee begins so it will take a couple of months um, so before we get started heather and donna would you too like to talk a little bit about what you're thinking with the school and how you would like to um, be involved with this with the town's process well, we've talked um, just very briefly about um, starting a committee within the district um, of, made up of people who are interested in really delving into our curriculum and what we are doing to um, study racism in our school, um, educate um, our staff and our students, um, thinking about um, you know, do we do we use the impact of people of a variety of races when we're studying, say, music and mathematics and science, and and the importance um, that those uh, that those individuals have had on um, in in the various areas, um, also kind of attitudes uh, within our schools, um, really looking at those and. Um, doing some education on how we can um, improve and expand uh, different attitudes of acceptance. And um, so we've just really started talking about pulling a committee together to, to do that studying. And I think it would be great if we could work with the town in that as well. Um, uh, so Heather, do you have any thoughts to add to that? That's really as far as we've gotten so far. Okay, now you should be able to hear me. Um, I agree, we, we haven't gotten super far into this. Uh, there's been a lot going on um, in the district, but we would like to, I believe, make um, a committee in the way that Donna, Superintendent Wolfram was referring to. I do think some crossover would be beneficial. Um, you know, we are living in this town together. There is so much overlap and, you know, similar to the sub-finance committee where we come together and we share and communicate, I think that would be extremely beneficial. Um, at the same time, I think it's also beneficial for us to have our, our own individual um, within the district talking about the curriculum and um, the professional development and um, the, the topic within the school. So um, I'm a proponent of both uh, individual with the schools and then a combined connecting with the town to see how, um, you know, how things overlap and how we can work together for sure. One of the things that I know we'll be talking about is recruitment and how we can um, expand our areas of re recruitment to, yes. to hire staff <clears throat> of um, diversities. Um, so that's one of the things that we'll be looking at how we can do that, so. That's great. Uh, one of the things that what I was thinking is maybe we could start with um, looking at how many people we're thinking about on this committee. I, um, 
typically our committees have seven people. Uh, mo they used to have a member of the town council assigned to each committee. They don't now. Occasionally there'll be a member um, like Jeremy Gabrielson's basically assigned this year with um, the Fort Williams Parks Committee because they're working on the master plan. But typically we don't have a town councilor specifically assigned. I think this would be an instance where I'd love to see a town councilor assigned to this committee. Um, that's just my, my take on it. And possibly, possibly someone from the school, if that's not, whether it's um, the school board or maybe um, one of the educators or a principal, some, somebody who might want to be um, assigned to this. I know that you're gonna have, I'm, I'm guessing you're gonna have your own and we'll have our own. Or if we don't have someone assigned from the school, I'd love to see it as a, um, where there's like a round table, maybe every couple months where the two committees get together and, and talk and have sort of a round table. So those were my thoughts about it. I don't know Maybe if- I have somebody um, from, from the school department assigned to the committee that, was, that, that met with that committee all of the time and could bring back the information um, to the schools. I think that's a good idea too. What, um, Jeremy and Caitlin, what are your thoughts on that? When you say assigned to the committee, do you mean like they're a committee member or like years ago when we would have like a representative liaison? And I, I would be thinking more like assigned as a member, but what, what are you thinking when you say that? I was thinking assigned as a member and they okay. would serve a term um, just like the volunteer, the other volunteers would. Yep. Yeah. And they would be a, a liaison as well back to the school. Yes. So, yeah. Right. We used to have specific liaisons that weren't voting members uh -oh. of the committees. But mm -hmm. This would be a voting member of the committee who's also reports back. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's kind of why I was thinking maybe nine members, because that way we would still have our seven core um, community members. And then possibly we'd have one person from town council and one person from um, the school. The yeah. other thought was, um, and I don't, I, I don't know if, I think we used to do this with town council, is to possibly have um, a high school student, maybe someone who's um, a rising sophomore, junior, or senior, as maybe a school representative. Um, or school government or high school representative to the committee? Because I know that, go ahead, Heather. I was just gonna say, we've had um, in our recent building committee, we've had students, um, even middle school students who were interested participate in the committee. And I believe that there might be interest in that. Um, students are very active and involved. We have two student reps that uh, come and participate and update us in every regular business meeting. So I think um, I think that's a great idea to get the voice of students involved. Do you agree, Donna? Yes, very much so. I think that's so. That's a too. nice thought. And, it, and they, give, they have a, a different take, a different energy, mm -hmm. and um, a different perspective. So um, that's something we could do. My only concern is if we meet at night or if the, when the committee meets, if it's difficult for the student reps, it would have to be something to where um, they could do it. But they, they attended the, um, the school. They come to the yeah. school board meetings at night. Yeah, the school board meetings. I, I think if you create regular consistency, I think the reason that the, the students who come to our Tuesday meeting know that it's once a month every Tuesday night and they can schedule that and make that regular. And there are certain times, you know, if there's a sport championship and they, they don't make it because um, it's something special, but um, for the most part, they're, they're pretty committed. But as long as it's not, you know, all over the place and, and make it difficult for them to schedule, I think that there would be a student that would be able to make it for sure. 
Okay. Now, are they voting members on your um, school committee? Uh, because they're under 18, they can't be, right? Okay. So, uh, Matt, would that be something to where if we had nine, so we would have actually mm -hmm. 11 members if we had two students? If you uh, went with two student representatives, non-voting uh, student representatives, mm -hmm. uh, that, would, that would put you at 11. Uh, the one other thing uh, that you may want to consider is quorum. Uh, when you have nine, you need to count to five to have a meeting that's effective or that you can actually make decisions in. Uh, whereas seven, you need to have four. Uh, so just uh, that's one thing to consider as you start to get larger, you really need to make sure that you have uh, you know, a solid, a solid count. And you know, there are times a year where it's more difficult than other times of the year to, to maintain a quorum. Uh, and that happened, that's regardless of, uh, of, of any committee. Uh, and then the other thought would be if you had a hard, uh, almost like a committee rule and they could get into this discussion with students, if you had a hard and fast rule that you would uh, you know, have the meeting end at nine o'clock, uh, that may not be a bad way to go about it either. That way a student could get home if they were out uh, at a reasonable hour. Okay, that, that's a great idea. So, um, right, if we had seven, we would need four for a quorum. So if you, yeah, if you did five members of the public at large, one school board member and uh, one town council member, that would give you seven, and then you'd have two more uh, non-voting student reps would give you nine. Uh, that mm -hmm. would be a pretty good, you know, You'd be able to get stuff done, and then you'd also be able to have a quorum on nights when you could only have four people uh, come, and uh, just just as a thought. Right. Okay. I I agree with that size. I think that's a that's a good mix. Yeah, and I think it's also worth remembering. It's likely that the school department's going to have a a, a committee that meets separate from this as well. So in terms of providing opportunities for people who want to engage around this issue, there will be opportunity, you know, even if they're meeting jointly some of the time, there'll be opportunities for more people to get involved looking at both sides of the town, town school government. That, that's a really good point, because that was my thought is, I, I want to make it so that enough people can get involved that want to be involved. Um, they could still come to meetings also. It would be an open meeting, so people would be invited to all of the meetings. Okay. All right, so for now, let's say seven, and then when we open it back up to, um, to our attendees, we can um, hear, hear their thoughts. But right now, let's say um, seven members with, um, we would have one Cape Elizabeth High School student rep and one um, middle school rep. Is that what we're thinking? Or you can, uh, Probably if, if I may, Madam Chair. I was thinking you may want to say up to two yeah. student representatives as your language and that way if you had a, 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 a very you know, committed uh, middle schooler mm -hmm. they could make application there or you could have two high school students uh, uh, who you know or if someone comes in on the middle school uh, they might be disqualified because you already have a student rep from the high school uh, if you limit it to that so if you have up to two student reps that may be a way that you could work with uh, some flexibility. Okay, that's a great idea. And if, if, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, I have uh, the description up on the screen here. If you'd like me to, I could share my screen just to, to show how, it, how, I'm, how I'm kind of functioning through this. Thank you, that would be great. Does that look, are you, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. I never, I never know, I have two screens up, so I wanna make sure, sorry for the delay. Well, it starts with name, so if that's what you're seeing, that's what yeah. we're seeing. Perfect. And, and Matt, <laughs> if, you could, if you could switch your view so that it's full screen, um, right now it's pretty small font. Oh, sorry. Or, I'm, not, I'm like in Word or whatever. Yeah. Let's see. No, nope, that's not good, is it? Sorry. Uh, it's a, it's, yeah. Let's see. It's it's legible if you can't do it easily. <laughs> I'm trying. I'll keep working on it while you while you discuss if that's okay. Okay. 
Now, you have it in there, one school board member. Do we want to make it a school board member or do we want it to be a, um, could it be a staff? Um, or would you prefer a school board member? Jim? How about if you said school department member? There you go. Jeremy? Uh, I was just, just for consistency with other town committees, uh, I mean, we don't, we, we changed our policy to allow school employees to serve on committees that don't speak directly to school issues. This may or may not do that. So having someone who is, you know, not necessarily a school department employee might be more consistent with our other policies on boards and committees. Okay. Matt, do you have any thoughts on that? I'm not, uh, well, uh, it may be good just thinking about the elected uh, representatives of the community being as part of the uh, of the of, of this body, uh, just as a thought, uh, you know, with a town council member and a and a school board member, versus say uh, it'd be you know, I couldn't put in one of my employees to be a voting member because you'd be somewhat concerned about a conflict of interest, I guess. I, whereas I might have an employee who would be you know, I would have staff the committee, and uh, you may want to have an a staff liaison uh, to it. So, uh, that's just one thought I have because you might have an employee that may not be a, uh, uh, a resident of Cape Elizabeth as well. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, and it, I think it's a little, it probably is more consistent if we say one school board and one town council because then they're both um, elected. Okay. All right. And then um, if we jump down to purpose of the, the committee, we had, um, there was one person who said they'd love to see, well, we've had lots of people talk about this, um, where we identify diversity and inclusion issues and opportunities or develop strategies and plans to examine ways in which we include or exclude uh, has anyone thought about what they'd like to see as a purpose, Jeremy? So I haven't, I haven't tweaked the language, um, but I think this might also be a good place to discuss whether this would be a standing committee or an ad hoc committee, because that might influence the purpose statement to some degree. Um, I do think it's important that the purpose statement include either the phrase anti-racism or policies that you know, a review of policies that promote, promote or, you know, uh, a review of policies that contribute to systemic racism. I, I don't think that just diversity is, is enough um, for the charge for this committee. Um, but um, yeah, I, my, my personal preference is I would like to see this set up as an ad hoc committee um, with a, a set time frame and a, and a recommendation um, in their even maybe in their purpose to come back to the council with set, you know, with recommendations within a set time frame, um, and that you know one of those recommendations could very well be make it a committee, making it a permanent committee. Um, yeah. In fact, I would hope it would be, but I think I'd like to have some more discussions at the committee level about you know what where the priority areas are. Um, before we, you know, let them do some, some finding <laughs> um, and right. where they're seeing priorities and then we can use that to sort of hold the charge for the, the standing committee. I, 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 I agree with all that. I, I think that's a great idea also. I think your, your timeline should be a, a one year. They should be able to meet and then you know, report back to the council within 12, you know, 12 months. Okay, I see that Matt's got the 12 months in there. Mm -hmm. um, so purpose would be to review policies that identify systemic racism. Um, or that contribute to.
that that contribute to systemic racism? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would think that part of the purpose also would be to um, promote um, or develop, talk about training, developing procedures that would promote diversity. Um, so, and even looking at our, um, our housing, our busing, that type of a thing. Yeah. So if I, if I could jump in, I, I might, um, so um, I'm sorry to make you type on the fly here, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I, I can try to keep up. <laughs> um, after systemic racism, I would, I would maybe even say something like, and make recommendations for policies mm -hmm. um, to promote greater equity and inclusion. And then I think the way, you know, this, what, the, all of what Valerie said, I'd agree with, you know, it's, it's training, it's housing, it's transportation. I mean, it's, it's kind of all of it. I'm stuck on that draft, one in between. <laughs> draft, draft procedures. Draft, okay, draft procedures. Provide training that promotes, promotes diversity. Does that seem in concert with where you'd like to be, Council Devereaux? Promotes diversity. Promote, promote diversity. Well, we, we also want to have um, um, not just promoting diversity, but looking at also um, racism, whether it's complicit or implicit. But we have that policies of systemic racism that's up top. Um, and then it would be also reviewing our comprehensive plan to look at ways that we can Promote equality, diversity. Are you thinking for the comprehensive plan from the housing standpoint and transportation standpoint? Yes. How about, how about support diversity? Oh, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think another purpose will be to decide if we need a standing committee. You're doing great typing on the fly there, Matt. <laughs> Years of practice. <laughs> All right. Anyone else have any ideas for this? We can always come back to it. I, I think this is a, a great start. Um, I think one of the other things that I've seen in some of the other um, committee descriptions that we have, you know, Matt has duties down below. Um, one of the, two of the questions that I had, and I don't have a, I don't have an answer for either of them. Um, it, one is is budget. Um, you know, I would anticipate that there might be some budget needs associated with this committee. I don't know what they are yet, um, and so that may be a duty that we want to think about giving to them is to come up with, you know, like what what would you need to do this work well. Um, 
in relatively <laughs> short order. Um, and then the other one is, I'm just curious um, if we have thoughts yet on what the staffing for this committee might might look like. Um, or, yeah. If I may, Madam Chair, I may provide some, some help on that. I, I do think, uh, you know, we may want to think about as far as what a funding amount might be and come back to the council with a recommendation to uh, to do that. Uh, I can also look at the recently passed budget to see if there are areas that we may be able to do because I did provide some funding in there for boards and committees uh, that we may be able to use some of those funds. Uh, one area and uh, I, I have to first acknowledge uh, a tip of the cap to uh, Paul Seidman because uh, he was uh, uh, he and I exchanged email over the weekend and he was kind enough to provide some thoughts in advance, uh, but it was on uh, trying to provide uh, some bias training and uh, uh, additional training for the committee in advance or at the start of the of the work session or start of their work so they can have uh, a foundation from which to build upon uh, for those uh, folks who do not have that perspective. Uh, and it just may be a good opportunity for training as well uh, to do that. So I think that will obviously have uh, some funding associated with it. And then uh, as far as who we might provide as a staff uh, liaison to it, uh, still thinking that part through. Uh, I know the chief and I have talked about it, uh, trying to decide uh, which, you know, which of us would probably be either, either uh, Chief Fenton or myself uh, would probably be the staff, uh, staff person for that. Uh, but I think that would probably be the most uh, appropriate from there. Paul's got some, uh, sorry, Chief Fenton has some great uh, training from there, and I know his staff is pursuing that. Uh, you know, and, I, you know, and quite frankly, I appreciated the uh, exploration of my own uh, foundation of who I am as a person uh, with this, with the advent of this conversation. You know, here professionally, but as well as as well as uh, in my own, uh, you know, at, at my home uh, with my family. And uh, you know, tomorrow I know uh, Councilor Devereaux and I, and possibly uh, Councilor Jordan, will be. Uh, doing some training through MMA, but uh, we're also doing it with the staff as well this summer. So, you know, this is, you know, we have a strong commitment to this and it needs to be from top to bottom. So, uh, but I guess that's my over -word, overly wordy uh, uh, response to we're still trying to decide uh, which of us will be uh, the staff liaison for uh, our staff support for the position. I I hear what you're saying, however, I have concerns about having um, the police staff this when we have people from the community looking at it as um, a committee that may even be looking into um, police policies. I don't know that, uh, and nothing against Chief Fenton, I just want it to be a safe um, committee and a, a safe place where people feel that um, they can speak what they need to speak and they can do the work they need to, to do. So I personally wouldn't think that um, having police as staff on the committee would be a good idea. No, nope, nope, duly noted. And I, that's been our apprehension as well, to be quite honest, uh, just with where we're at. But we may also have uh, additional staff members outside of myself who have, uh, a, you know, it may be a great opportunity for them as well, and they have a strong passion. So, uh, but I'll have to get back on that. We're still we're still working that part through. That that's great. But I noticed that some of the other committees um, aren't staffed. So, would we have to have a staff person, or would it be because it's an ad hoc committee? You feel that we need a staff person? Yeah, I, th I think they uh, they should all be. All committees are staffed. Yeah, I think I think they think they all are because they uh, yeah it's just part of the part of the requirement they need to have a staff liaison just mostly for minute taking uh, and management and uh, just trying to make sure that they get you know if there are needs that a committee may have uh, that they can provide that staff support uh, for it they don't generally provide input uh, it's mostly to say okay you need you know, room time materials things along those lines to make sure or if they need someone to reach out and organize. Um, other resources such as speakers or uh, different different uh, avenues of need. Right, but they're not necessarily at the meetings, is what I'm yes. saying. Yes, they always are. They okay. should be. Okay. If they aren't, uh, I'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. 
so we can figure out who would be staffing it and yeah. maybe somebody from your office. Yeah, okay. I have a feeling it'll, it'll either be me or it will be uh, somebody close, <laughs> close by, so. Okay. So does everybody feel comfortable with the purpose, ready to move on from that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we look at the duties of the committee, So to hold hearings, okay. Uh, I stole this from the uh, from the uh, personnel appeals committee. Just <laughs> it's just space savers for uh, for the uh, formatting. <laughs> they were more. They were more of an example of what uh, of what committees may may end up doing. So. Well, I, I think this, I, I don't think it's duty number one, but um, where we have expressed a desire for this town committee to interface with a, a co similar committee that the school department may um, appoint, I think putting that up, up front in the charge would be, would be good. You know, whether that's regular meetings or however the committee decides to make that happen, but I think we should make that link explicit. Caitlin, do you have any ideas about duties that you'd like to see this committee have? Well, we covered a lot of it in the purpose. Yeah, we did. And it's a lot, I don't know if some of that purpose should come down to duties, I don't know. Yeah, we did, we put a lot of it in the purpose. Mm -hmm. That last one, making a recommendation on establishment of the committee could easily come right down in at the duty. Into duties. A, good, a duty would be to report, you know, to find recommendations and report back to the council. There's a whole format of how we did the duties in the ordinance committee. They kind of like In the ordinance, I mean. Kayla, I'm sorry, could, would you repeat that again? I thought that was awesome how you just said that. Well, so like, what, which part? About, uh, uh, before you said, uh, make recommendation back to the council or find. Yeah, it's, well, it would be in almost all the duties of every committee that's in the ordinance. Okay. Because they're, they're, when we rewrote the ordinance for boards and committees, we tried to make everything very consistent. And that language was put in almost every committee because there was the whole, you know, problem where committees thought they were their own people and they needed to be reminded that they are to make recommendations and report to the council with thoughts and ideas. Matt, I have that um, I have that ordinance up here. If you want, I can share that for a minute just to show what the other committee charges look like. That'd be great. Let's see. I think I can do it without you doing. Oh, maybe you have to end first and then. Let's see here. All right, it's going to take me just a moment here. I think. Okay. Okay, you should be good to go, Jeremy. All right, here we go. Are you seeing the ordinance um, should be showing the conservation committee duties? Is that? Yes. Yep, so it's like advise. So to be something like, like the community services committee is, is to advise the community service director on issues, we could amend something like it would, that. It would be to advise the town council on issues of, you know, potential racism, inequality. That's why a lot of what we want, I think, are put into the purpose. With the idea that it's an ad hoc committee, I like the I, I like the phrasing of I mean advise is sort of an ongoing thing, 
what we really, I think what we're really looking forward for here is, is either a report or a set of recommendations from this group. Right. I, I exactly, I agree. Right. Well, we want, we want them to review policies that contribute to um, racism or anti-racism. And um, we want them to advise and they're not really going to be performing regular outreach, but we want them to advise the council and we want them to um, give us a recommendation on whether they should be a standing committee. Yeah, and I think, I think that's one recommendation I want. I also would love for them to kind of look through a whole host of things that the town is doing and make some recommendations to the council for where the priorities are. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't they just may, you know, may decide not to act on some of the priorities that the committee highlights, but I'd, I'd like to see them sort of help us do some of the work of identifying what the priority policy changes are. Or where they see opportunities for policy changes. So basically to review policies and um, identify changes or um, ways in which we can update, change our policies, exam re-examine our policies. Matt, if I stop sharing, do you want to throw up what you've captured so far? Sure, sure. <laughs> Don't blink. <laughs> I, I, I tried to grab a few of those items. Uh, provide a report. Uh, one part I had provide a report and a set of recommendations. I need some more bones on that there. Um, but review policies that identify racism and anti racism, and then review and make recommendations to the town council on where there are opportunities for policy changes? You know, um, this was sent to us in an email. So I'm just going to read um, what she had said. I really liked how she put this together. It said, objectively look at our housing, police, library, et cetera. So I'm thinking our municipal departments, including our housing, um, working with representatives of those departments as well. Including housing. Working with representatives of those departments as well as seeking opinions from the community on what needs to be improved or added to every major component of town. We, she has town life. We can tweak that a little bit. Of, of life in Cape Elizabeth mm -hmm. of public services. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for bringing that up, Valerie. I think that actually really nicely sums up, you know, the the, the main bulk of the charge. The only thing that I might add is is and. and I don't know if it's in this recommendation or elsewhere, but I know under E, for example, it says policies. I think it's not just policies, it's, it's policies and services. It's not just like what we, how we say we're going, we wanna be doing things, but how are we actually doing things? Um, and are we doing them in a way that, that is, um, is thoughtful for people from all backgrounds?
And when I was thinking about it as a standing committee, I was thinking about performing regular outreach, um, promote training and events to bring awareness um, to, of diversity and inclusion. But since it's not a standing committee, I don't know that um, that would be their duties. That would be something they would look at to create in a standing committee. It may, uh, thinking about, uh, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, sorry, I have to jump in. I was thinking of, uh, who was, I think it was, I think, yeah, Nicole Boucher had brought up the, uh, the point of thinking about getting involved with community events, and it may be a good opportunity to uh, explore community, in, in the vein of what you were just saying, explore opportunities for community outreach to, uh, to gather input uh, on the subject of, of racism and, and, and inclusivity in the community, mm -hmm. something like that. Right. And then, um, There's also the thought of um, if there's discrimination cases, it would be a committee that people would feel comfortable about coming to and saying, this is what's happened. I don't know how we would, um, how that would connect with, um, so, so if it was, um, public employee, typically they go to management and talk to management. Would this committee be something to where someone in the community or someone whose staff could come to a committee and say, hey, this has happened and the committee would look into it? Would, and I'm thinking maybe that's something um, this ad hoc committee would talk about and decide if that's what they wanna include in a standing committee. Uh, when it comes to a personnel matter, I think uh, I think the laws are pretty strong on that. Uh, we'd have to handle that from a management side of it. But uh, yeah, all, all of a sudden you start getting in some pretty deep water when it comes to that, uh, unfortunately. Right. And that's the same with, um, because people had talked about hiring and all of that. So I think that's something that the committee can delve into or talk about. Yeah. I don't know that it's, um, it wouldn't be a recommendation for this committee. It would be something this committee could talk about and give a recommendation to the town council. Yeah. Okay. I mean, frankly, we've given them a lot to chew on and troll. <laughs> it is, it is a lot. I think some of this may be able to be uh, blended though. Uh, you know, uh, there may be areas that you can combine that may find uh, crossover in uh, as you explore it, uh, just as a thought. Um, but on the first first draft, I think you're yeah you're gonna you're gonna your list is gonna grow, and then as you go look at your second draft, it'll definitely compress as concepts kind of come together. It's like oh, are we saying the same thing in both uh, let's say in C and D as we as we or what's our intent here? Right. Yeah, there's a couple of places where it looks like it's similar. Jeremy, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, before we do that, just one other idea that I would like to throw in. Um, you know, I think um, I, I don't I don't want to, you know, micromanage how this committee does their work. Um, but I, I like the idea of them bringing recommendations to the council. But I'd also like to make it clear that if they get three months into this process and they really feel this committee really feels the council should do this. And they know that that's gonna you know, be in there. I don't want them to feel like they have to wait 12 months and then send us a report. So if they wanna come bring forward ideas, I'd like to make sure that that, you know, as the, the way it reads right now with providing a report, it seems like, you know, go off, do your thing and then come back <laughs> when you're ready. Um, I don't know what others feel about that though. No, I think that's a great idea. and we can word it so that um, you can put 
report with, um, you know, reports in a parenthesis. So it's report or reports, provide reports. So they don't think it's just one report or one set of recommendations. And we have a 12 month time limit, but it doesn't mean that they have that at the end of 12 months is when they come back. Um, and, but that's something we can shore up a little bit too. And Okay. Any other ideas? Were you were you getting ready to say something, Caitlin? It looked like you were. Mm -hmm. You're on mute. Thanks. Sorry. Somebody was talking in the background, so I had to mute. Um, I was just saying that D and F can kind of be combined, and then you can put some of the you know recommendations throughout the year with the final report at the conclusion of their 12 months. So that kind of makes it so that it gets to that point where they can bring something to the council immediately. Valerie, I wonder if this might be a good time to see if folks who are listening in have, have comments. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Matt, I, um, with this view, I, let's see if I can see the participants. I'm on it, Madam Chairman. <laughs> I've got you. Uh, first, uh, we have Nasser with his hand up and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get him live here. Can you see my screen with that uh, box in there or no? I can. I can see your screen with the um, with the language on it. The language on it. Okay. Now, Nasser, your microphone should be live, sir. Yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, what a great job in the last hour or so, guys. This is amazing. Uh, things come together really, really fast. I would like to applaud you for that. Uh, as uh, I think, uh, my question has been more or less answered by. Matt, there will be second drafts, there will be other drafts. Um, I've taken some notes here on my phone and I'm reading up my notes. So I'm glad that you guys chose seven versus nine. Um, it's a one year volunteer term. And just in reference to that, I know sometimes someone had mentioned in my, do we need one member to be from an outsider, outsider meaning a non-resident who can give a fresh and different opinion. Um, so that's just something to think about. Um, as far as duties goes, I, you guys are right, the duties will change. Um, I would rather see if possible that this um, committee has some sort of role to send its member to a hiring committee whoever is hiring within the city, whether schools or police or elsewhere, just see if that's a possibility. Um, I think Matt is correct. Uh, there's probably a lot of discrimination laws behind us in case something does bad happen. We can eliminate that. Um, so does this committee have any finance, I want to say power or accessibility or resources? that it can help people who cannot afford uh, their deposit to live in Cape Elizabeth or any tax incentives or anything of that nature or can they help or access some funds from general system for purposes of affordability you know, and deposits and things of that nature. And uh, lastly and most importantly, uh, what is this committee's relationship will be with the Cape Diversity Coalition, whose missions and purpose is similar, but is 
large citizen. They don't have any political power. They don't. They're not appointed, and nor is there, uh, nor there is the resources or finances there. So I would like to know what will be its relationship with CDC along with other CAPE entities. And again, uh, thank you very much and a great job this evening. Thank you, Nasser. Next we have uh, Paul Seidman. And Paul, you should be... I'm good. <laughs> you're good, sir, thank you. <laughs> uh, thanks for all the work you're doing so far. I want to... Um, I want to make a recommendation and I want to ask a question. So everything that's being typed up tonight, when tonight is over is, you know, in a sense, is the door slammed shut on what's been written up or no? Okay. Um, so my recommendation is, especially given your conversation about students is, um, I think it would be great if there was one or two alumni, um, especially given COVID people are around <laughs> who might not otherwise be around, I'm, I'm noticing that. Um, so possibly to include that demographic. And it's unclear, maybe you guys can clarify, um, how many seats are sort of open to citizens, you know, open seats, like that aren't already slotted in some way, like to students, et cetera. Jeremy, yeah? I'm done. Five, five. <laughs> I, I was just holding up my hand, Paul, as a gesture to say five right now. We've talked about two, one counselor, one school board member, and then it would be five. The way it's drafted now, it would be five community members. Okay, great. I, am I still talking? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. So I don't, so if the number is seven and you have a school board member and a town counselor and two student reps, that's four people. So where are the five? The the two student reps would be non non voting, and then there would be five uh, members of the uh, K presidents. So oh, I see. So the two students aren't counted in the seven. Yeah, because they'd be gotcha. underage, presumably. So uh, it'd have to be a uh, you know a, yeah a person old enough to vote. Okay, so if if we tossed in an alumni. Um, or two, I get. I definitely get that the number needs to be odd. Um, I guess I'm just wondering, you know, if we sort of, you know, if you all sort of realize like, oh, it might be good to, you know, tap that demographic or whatever, um, is there the option to bump it up to nine? I'll, I'll, I'll respond to that. Um, we have the option to bump it up to nine now. However, um, my understanding is we can't put a label on it saying um, this has to be an alumni um, because then we're basically um, run into problems with um, age discrimination. So we can't, we can't set a member based on age, race, sex, sexual orientation, gen that type of a thing. Right. We can do it um, because it's a a school, um, high school or middle school student, we can do that. But um, if an alumni wants to apply to be on it, that would be fabulous. But we can't say we have to have a slot for an alumni. Gotcha, makes sense. Thanks a lot. Did you have any other comments, um, Paul? Were you finished? Well, I mean, the, the fact that you said the door doesn't slam shut is basically, you know, I, I think that there are a lot of people who would love to see this who, I mean, what's the total now for the people that are listening in? Oh, the 18 right now. Oh, 18. Okay, that's better. I'm sure there are a lot of people that would love to look this over and be able to give feedback. And so as long as I know that's part of the process, I'm, I'm, I'm chill. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Okay. Next, we have uh, Gina Tapp. Gina, I'm going to have you unmuted here in a moment. You should be good to go. Thank you for your patience. Okay, thanks. Um, I just wanted to say uh, my husband, Wayne, has been on listening to your meeting as I've been on the City of Portland meeting that just adjourned recently. We're both 
talking about all these really important issues of racial equity. And I just want to um, add, as uh, um, parents of a Black girl in the high school, and appreciating what you're talking about tonight, and so glad that you're taking this so seriously. I also want to mention that um, I learned this week um, that May Municipal Association, which I'm sure Cape Elizabeth is, is a part of, is um, looking into a partnership with the National um, League of Cities on some really um, cool and important work around um, racial equity initiatives. So I hope that um, that you will look into that and consider it as we are um, looking into it um, in Portland as well, because we don't have to recreate the week on all of this. There are some really great resources out there for us to tap into people who are really steeped in knowledge and experiences and wanting to help municipalities across the country deal with what we are all facing right now. So just want to say thanks. I appreciate how seriously you're taking this and um, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Thank you for that. Um, we'll, Matt, I'm sure we can check into the League of Cities. Yeah, and uh, I, I, have, I have somewhat of a thought that we may hear about this uh, tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. as well when, when we dial in. And that's, uh, those are the comments that we have, Madam Chair. Okay, all right. Um, I, I wanted to um, respond. Uh, someone had asked, um, how are, how is everyone elected? They're appointed, actually. So what happens then, once this committee is approved, then it's going to go out, a notice will go out in the Cape Courier that says we have this new committee, please apply, and there'll be applications that you fill out online, um, or you, I believe, can you also get a paper application in the yes. town? So you fill out the applications, they come back to us, the three members of the appointment committee, and we interview view you, depending on how many people we get and um, the timing of it, we will interview you and then we will make recommendations to the town council um, that'll be voted on and then people will be appointed. It's, we're looking at, um, this will be a one year term limit, but my guess is there'll be, if there is a standing committee that's recommended, then there'll be um, staggered term limits. They could be two years, three years, but they would be staggered. And so um, you would commit to the committee for a couple of years. But this first committee will be an ad hoc committee that would be a one year term. So, um, but, but you'll be hearing more about it as the process goes along about when to apply for the committee. So um, that's how that process works. And then um, funds. Um, Nasser had asked about um, will the committee have funds to help people in town. Matt, do you want to explain a little bit about the different um, programs we have that help people in town? Sure. Uh, there, it's uh, some of it's. Uh, well, I'll, I'll address first. Uh, uh, Nasser had brought up a question about uh, like property taxation. Uh, that's an area that I don't believe uh, we would be able to get into because those are state laws that, uh, that address that. Uh, there are hardship abatements that the council can process. Uh, there, is, uh, there is some uh, elements when there is low income housing. Uh, we have some uh, low income housing and moderate income housing units that are in town that are deed restricted as far as uh, limiting their value. Uh, and those do have uh, you know, legal restrictions on them and they are handled accordingly uh, with their tax assessment. So. There are benefits that are there when you do create a, a housing opportunity like that. Uh, as far as uh, if there's an opportunity to help someone with a down payment or things along those lines, there, there isn't a mechanism in place at the present time for, for non-residents. There, uh, there is the Thomas Jordan Trust, which does provide opportunities or help for, or assistance for folks who are in need uh, that is reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, that has been you know, used by members of the community. It's not available for uh, like tax abatements and things along those lines to fund those uh, by, by its definition, but there are other opportunities that uh, that does provide for folks. 
Uh, and then thinking about other funds, the town uh, has done and may uh, think about this in the future to create uh, maybe a housing opportunity fund similar to what, uh, you know, similar to what has been taking place with the senior citizen uh, uh, property tax relief program. Uh, that could be something that town could do, or there are also, uh, you know, there may be a mechanism out there such as, you know, towns or, and some cities do like business development, like, um, what do you call it? Like, um, like Sar Scarborough Economic Development Committee or uh, corporation does loans for businesses to help them uh, start up, you know, or GP Cog has loans like that. So there are uh, those types of funds that could be established uh, below low, uh, sorry, uh, low interest loans or things along those lines to get people started. Uh, but that, that doesn't currently exist, but that may be something uh, that may come as a recommendation to create like a, an incub a housing incubator fund uh, that the town may want to provide uh, money for. Uh, but those are, that could be a recommendation that could come from uh, a person, as well as, uh, you know, looking at other lots that uh, the town may have or other opportunities to partner with uh, such entities as Habitat for Humanity or other uh, social service agencies that, uh, that do that type of work uh, specific to housing, or even Avesta for that matter. Uh, Scarborough has worked with doing, uh, and not, not to say I know everything all about Scarborough, but during my time there as the assessor, uh, I know they were doing a low income housing TIF uh, to, to provide funding from the area uh, that as, as it grew in value, the funds that would come from that uh, would help uh, offset the, the the debt service for a uh, low income housing project that they established in the town in the town center. So uh, there are tools out there that they, the town just hasn't deployed as of yet, but they do exist out there. Thank you. And, and then we did discuss um, resources for the committee, some sort of um, funding. Do we want to talk about that now, or would that be something that we ha that the town council discusses on the 13th? It, I think that may be something I, I may have some time to at least take a look at the overall amount they will have available, but to make a recommendation to get started with X amount of dollars uh, as once the committee is established to help them, you know, look into different areas where they may want to get a speaker or uh, some training or other uh, opportunities for funding, at least as far as uh, to help them uh, meet all their duties and uh, stated objectives. Okay, and then I, I just realized um, we didn't name this committee. That was my, nope. my next question. <laughs> I realize it's an ad hoc committee, but um, I think we should give it some sort of a name. Does anyone have um, any suggestions for um, a name for the committee? I know we had talked about um, diversity and inclusion. Uh, I had written some, some ideas down for, um, for names. Since it is an ad hoc committee, do we wanna name it something different than what a standing committee would be named? Or do you think it matters? I think you have all, all the freedom to name the committee as the, as the appointments committee uh, wishes. Notwithstanding yeah. needing the council's approval. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the um, ideas I had is um, the acronym, acronym IDEA, I-D-E-A, which would be inclusion, diversity, equality, awareness. Ooh, that's good. I like the acronym. Isn't that a great acronym? I, I like it because IDEA, um, it, it kind of gives a certain energy to it. Mm -hmm. We could call it the idea committee. Yeah. Any other? I, I, yeah, I didn't have any particular thoughts on, on a name. Um, I, I like that. I, yeah. Okay, um, Heather or Donna, do you have any ideas? I know you're gonna be putting together a school committee. Um, anything that you'd like to see in it as a town committee? No, I think that sounds great. 
Okay. I think somebody had mentioned that they wanted something about anti-racism. Yes. In the title, but. Um, Well, the A could stand for anti-racism. I like the idea of awareness also. Um, and that's something that we can, um, we can- Say anti-racism awareness. Yes, anti-racism awareness. So the A could stand for either um, or both. Or you could have two A's on the end of idea. That's true, we could have two A's. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a long name, but I like... Um, Got a great acronym. Yeah, yeah great it? acronym. <laughs> you, have my, you have my uh, gratitude. <laughs> uh, I like acronyms. So, um, okay. Um, Valerie, I um, just wanted to, uh, could I speak to a couple of points that Nasser and Gina brought up? Please do. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you everyone for participating um, with and bringing forward some great ideas for this. Um, I wanted to in particular um, speak to Nasser's question about having someone um, from another community um, be on this. Um, I think, I, I don't know as a voting member if we would be allowed to do that, but I do think it's valuable both to Nasser's point and to Gina's point that we're learning from what's happening in other communities. Um, and so what, what I would suggest as a way to address that is perhaps under duties, we could uh, um, either add one or replace C, which seems to duplicate, repli duplicate a lot of what's in D with uh, seek advice on best practices from other communities in the region and throughout the country. Um, I think there's a lot of learning that's happening around this and how communities can be supportive of everyone who lives in our country um, right now that, that a lot of communities are going through. And I know in addition to what MMA is doing, um, the Greater Portland Council of Governments is also doing some learning around um, equity and inclusion um, over the course of the summer too. So I think there'll be a lot of good ideas that we can borrow. I think that's great. Did, did you get that, um, Matt? So, uh, I'm, I'm stuck on this one middle part. Seek advice and inclusivity on, on inclusivity and equity from uh, Best resources right. from outside of the community? I, I would say from other communities in the region and around the country. Yeah, we, we'll be able to um, condense some of these a little bit. And I like how you said best practices, um, seek advice on best practices. Seek advice um, on best practices. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. And then you, yeah, yeah there you go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I think that's really good. All right. Any other thoughts? Does anyone, um, any of our attendees have any additional thoughts um, now that we've gone through this? Matt, do you see any, any hands raised? Sure, we have uh, Eliza Matheson and Eliza, I'll, I'll unmute you here. There we go. You should be. Oops. You should be able to go. I'm not sure if it's muted on your end. There you go. You should be live now. Thank you. 
here I am. Okay, thank you. Um, just going back up to the I, um, the idea acronym. I'm wondering if we can for both consistency and um, change it to equity, given that they do have two different um, distribution of resources. Um, equality being that we give, you know, we don't take into account certain aspects that may of life that may require more resources equality is giving the exact same resources to everybody that's a great idea if if, if i your heard audio. you correctly did you say equity yes please thank you your, your audio cut out a little bit but that that was what i was just gonna try and confirm as well thanks a lot okay awesome thank you thank you now we have uh, Jen McVeigh, and Jen, you should be good to go. Thank you for hosting this this evening. I just wanted to echo Eliza's statement that equity over equality. Thank you. We really. Oh, shoot. Jen, hold on just a moment. I, I'm sorry I hit that button too fast. Nope, that's okay. I'm all set. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, now we have uh, Valerie Lovanos. Valerie, you should be, you should, mute should be live. Hi. Um, I just wanted to disambiguate the acronym because IDEA can also be the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. I didn't want it to be oh. confusing. Oh. Not with two A's. True. <laughs> okay, that's something that's something to, to consider and to um, we can make the town council aware of that also. And it will give us a little bit more time to think about other acronyms if we do want to change it. And please email uh, me if you have ideas on what to call the committee because we, it's nothing set in stone right now. We're still um, working this through and we're gonna bring it to the town council. And next we have uh, Paul Seidman back. And Paul, you should be. Hi, uh, I love acronyms. Uh, <laughs> I have one, action, anti-racism committee to include our neighbors, but that's just off of the top of my head. These are the things I love to work on for the next seven hours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay, I expect to get an email from you. <laughs> it's almost like uh, uh, the, the, if you have, it's like the puzzler on NPR on Sunday mornings. <laughs> right, right. Do we have anyone else? Um, nope. oh, Melanie Thomas, there we go, she just popped up. Melanie, uh, you should be good to go. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. hi again. Um, truth be told, I don't really even care what the name is. Um, I'm just more about mm -hmm. action and what will be done. Um, I actually do like the acronym. Um, I'd love to see maybe anti-racism before awareness, but it really doesn't even matter. Um, I am thoroughly impressed um, with what you guys are doing um, and where things are going. It's almost like you don't need to be led. You are understanding and figuring it out on your own. So um, I truly appreciate that. I think my only question would be, um, feeling like this is so overdue, um, that maybe we could possibly speed things up um, as far as putting stuff out to the public about, um, you know, putting your application in and, and getting things started a little sooner. It just seems like August or September just seems a long ways to go. Um, and this, this subcommittee uh, really could do some amazing things um, soon, uh, especially with the momentum uh, swinging in our favor. So again, those are just suggestions, um, but I, I really appreciate you all and what you're doing. I truly do. 
Thank you so much, Melanie. And I just want to um, point out to you that we are um, right now at July 1st. It's, I can't believe it's already July. Um, so we do meet with the council on um, the 13th, which is in two weeks. We have a workshop meeting next week, which Matt, I believe it's um, pretty full calendar, isn't it? Well, I don't, I don't believe we have a workshop next week. Oh, I thought we had the workshop. I have it on my calendar is next week. I will double check it, but I think, uh, I think you may actually have a week off. Oh, great. Okay. So <laughs> news. You've had, you've, you've had uh, about 17 straight, <laughs> just we have. for the record counselor. <laughs> We have so July 13th it, we will bring this before um, the council we can um, we can also email it to the council ahead of time if and so they can take a look at it and um, and then it has to be put into the Cape Courier and they're gonna need a little bit of time um, so that's gonna take probably a week or so for them to print the Cape Courier and then we need to set at least 30 days for people to um, put their applications in before we start interviewing. So I think that um, September is really what we're looking at for the start of the committee. But, um, but we'll move along as quickly as we can. Uh, that's definitely our plan to move as quickly as we can on this. So, um, Jeremy? Um, I, I just, as you were saying that recalled, I also wanted to um, speak to you and, and just get some input from you and Caitlin as well um, on one of Nasser's other comments, which I think speaks to this um, question as well about the relationship between this committee and the Cape Diversity Coalition. Um, and I, I guess my thoughts on that are that I would certainly hope to look to folks who are involved with Cape Diversity Coalition for, for leadership um, and that folks who are involved in that group or other groups that are, are have already been doing a lot of thinking around this um, as potential members for this committee um, and would encourage them to help us get the word out uh, to, you know, everyone in town that, you know, we will be, we will be looking for, for members to be appointed to this committee um, and, and hopefully you know, that'd be, that'd be a beneficial, you know, we, we would certainly benefit from that. The town would benefit from the groundwork that they've laid. I, I completely agree. And I think that, um, I know that they have a uh, Facebook page. So um, Paul Nasser, someone can get this on their Facebook page and let people know that we're uh, that we're going to be interviewing people for the committee, I think that would be really really helpful. Um, and, any and, and similarly, if people you know if they want to, when Matt I'm assuming can post this, uh, you know, some probably not immediately, but um, for as part of the packet for the town council um, for the 13th, this document that we've been working on will be in that and. You know, I would hope that we can count on Nasser and other folks to take a look at it and continue giving us some feedback to inform the council's discussion at our at our meeting. Which we should have yeah, we should have it posted on uh, next Wednesday next Wednesday evening Thursday morning at the at the latest. Uh, we're working on uh, we're working on the thirteenth agenda as we speak. So uh, Debbie's got an election to do, so we want to make sure we get as much of uh, that ahead of time for her. Yeah, she's, she's busy. Um, also, I just want to make sure that in the acronym, we do change awareness with anti-racism. So anti-racism. Flip them. Yeah, flip, flip the two before you um, send that out. And then awareness would be the last A. All right. Um, uh, Madam Chair, we do have uh, Audra Gore has uh, raised her hand as well. OK, Audra. Um, I would love if it could be possible, perhaps it's through the Cape Courier at the same time that the announcement is coming out, that there's some sort of survey or informal survey, some method of reaching and hearing from and alerting 
the community in as many ways as possible what's happening and that um, that our black community members, people of color would all have an opportunity to, to know what's happening. And I'm not exactly sure what that method is, but it needs to be a high priority. And, it, it, and perhaps the Cape Courier is one of those ways. Um, I wonder what your thoughts are on that. Thank you, Audra. Um, well, a survey basically asking them about what they think. Is that what you're talking about when you say a I survey? don't have the idea fully. It's not a fully formed thought. It's more that I know there are just a handful of us on this this evening. And I imagine that if it had been more widely known, it would have a much larger participation at this moment by all different community members and um, you know perhaps even youth <laughs> so I'm just I just how how do we make sure that the broader keep community not just people who have Facebook know about this yeah Jeremy so I that that's an excellent idea um, and um, I I think one of the I, I also appreciate um, can't remember. I think it was Melanie wanting to you know, sort of keep some momentum around this. I think one of the ways that we could do that, um, and this may be something that the Cape Diversity Coalition could help with too, is um, during that period when we have nominations open, um, hosting some type of event, whether Cape Diversity Coalition chooses to host an event or work with us to host something through the library, um, it would be more of a community event opportunity for conversation and dialogue um, and that the folks from the diversity committee uh, could, you know, at least one of us could attend and let people know, you know, if you really, if you want to be engaged, here's an opportunity. Um, but I think some sort of outreach like that during that, during the period in July would, would both get some ideas, maintain some momentum and potentially, you know, increase the pool of folks that we have to, to draw from. I think that's a great idea. And Matt, uh, typically we put this in the Cape Courier. I guess there, there could be an article written also in the Cape Courier. There, um, there could be something, there'll be something posted on the town's website. Um, possibly even the school's website could say that um, we're, the town is looking to do this. Um, other Facebook pages, uh, any other ideas, Matt, of how we've gotten messages out? I, I know that we were talking about um, emails, emailing people, but we haven't got that set up yet, right? Uh, the, one, the one thing we do, uh, a couple of thoughts there. Uh, I imagine that uh, tomorrow at some point or within the next day or two, uh, a story of this meeting will be on the, uh, will be on the website. Uh, kind of summarizing tonight's events. Uh, so that'll get things started a bit. I do think it's good. The Courier is a good opportunity to advertise because it is delivered to every every home in town, uh, which is helpful. Uh, it's also available at the library. We could promote it. Uh, you know, we'll obviously promote it through the, uh, through the town's website. Uh, but I do think an article would be, uh, you know, more of us, an article versus just a uh, advertisement for appointments would be a good way to approach that and just say, you know, we're, we're looking for help. And we want, uh, we want, you know, we want people with all perspectives to, to come in on this, but we really need, uh, we really need those with that strength in the community to come forward and help, uh, help shape the direction as to where, where we need to go and make recommendations that'll improve, uh, improve life as we know it uh, for, for everyone. So uh, we, we can think about that. And the other thing is that the, if, you know, when that story gets on, if it gets on the website tomorrow, uh, there are folks who do subscribe uh, to get, uh, basically Wendy does a little blurb at the end of the month, we'll do a blast for the headlines of all the stories that came out during the month of June or at the end of the month. So as that kicks up, it's like, okay, these are all the stories that were on here and this would be one of those stories as well. And those do go out to everybody through, the, uh, through a subscription uh, to the town's email, uh, but I, 
you know, we'll, we need help from all corners as far as uh, as recruiting for for all committees. But this would be one that we would appreciate help from uh, diverse members of our community to provide that where folks may, you know, where where we may be missing through all of our different means of uh, outreach. Mm -hmm. Is there um, a way that the library could put something on there? I'm sure we could definitely. I, yeah, I, I know. That's one item that we uh, thought about maybe adding uh, in there is uh, employing the library as a resource for community engagement as well, because I know uh, the staff uh, as well as uh, you know library director, uh, there's a lot of uh, desire to, to try to provide a, a resource for or an opportunity for a conversation and action uh, via the library as a resource. And I think it's, you know, once we can actually start getting in person, I know they've done a great job with online, but I think uh, you know it's an opportunity for programming and and helping folks uh, really get uh, go in depth uh, with community conversations. You know, like with the Socrates Cafe and different uh, opportunities for community conversation and engagement. I think I know Rachel has expressed a, a, an enormous amount of desire uh, to get the library uh, involved as a resource to help. Uh, to help in you know, to help with the subject as well. That's great. And and what about community services? I know there's a lot of people that um, are connected through community services. Is there some way that we could get it on their Facebook page? Definitely, we could recruit through there as well. I see. Uh, I see. Uh, John Cessary is on here tonight as an attendee. So and uh, he he works for us over there. So uh, we can I can follow up with John on that as well. So he's been he's been a great resource uh, throughout, throughout all the conversations we've been having on, you know, on the town side. So I uh, appreciate seeing him on here tonight. No, yeah, that's great. Um, any, any other thoughts um, by anyone before we close out the meeting? Jeremy? Um, I just wanted to, um, to follow up with Donna and, and Heather quickly both to say thank you for adding another meeting to your schedule. <laughs> Um, and also to volunteer myself or one of my colleagues. But um, as you as you guys are having discussions around this with the school board too, um, you know, I would be willing to participate um, in a similar way. And I'm, I'm look like Valerie's nodding as yeah. well. So just let us know, and we'll we'll um, one of us will be there. Thank you. Definitely, definitely. Madam Chair, we do. Uh, Speaking of John, uh, he, he's raised his hand, if you don't mind me uh, 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 promoting him here for a moment. There you go, John, you should be live. Hopefully. Hi, John. You're still muted. Yeah, yeah you're live. <laughs> Hi, guys, thank you for uh, a successful meeting. You guys are all always interesting to talk to, and Matt, you do a wonderful job. And thanks for the comments for everybody tonight. It was, it was very helpful. I, I had one closing thought, and Jeremy actually uh, made me think of it. And we're talking about equity and to try to make it possible for everybody to be on these committees and possibly be on like the town council. I wonder if we should talk about some sort of compensation because a lot of people are, it's difficult. You know, a lot of us have the luxury and the privilege of being able to have some time off and, you know, work for ourselves to uh, attend all these meetings and to do all the work, but you know, not everybody has that access and I don't know, maybe something about equity and compensation should be considered for any position moving forward. Just a thought. Thank you, John. That's um, something that we can talk to the town council about. It's just, we have so many committees that um, then how do you how do you balance it with all the different committees but it's definitely something um, that I think that we should have a conversation around because it would be nice to be more inclusive create that uh, anyone else have any other thoughts okay well I just I want to thank everyone for um, for joining us, thank you to our school board chair, Heather Altenberg, for taking the time to be here tonight. And for our school superintendent, Donna Wolfram, thank you so much. You're, you really added to the conversation. I think that your voice has been really important. Um, in thank you for inviting us. 
thank you. Thank you for adding us to your dance card. And thank you to all of our attendees. It was, uh, I felt like it was a very meaningful um, meeting. We accomplished a lot and please feel free to email myself, members of the appointment committee. If you wanna email town councilors, please do. We wanna hear from you. Um, and so Paul, I'll be waiting to see what acronyms you come up with. <laughs> <laughs> and um, no pressure, no pressure at all. And um, thank you all so much. And join us on the 13th for our next um, town council meeting. So thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>